Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to another five point of view in the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I break down everything you need to know about a game into about five points. Today, I'm taking a look at Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters Anniversary Edition. This one's a cooperative game for one of four players in which you are playing treasure hunters, going into a house, defeating ghosts, roll and move style, uh, also clashing with them with your dice, picking up the jewels and escaping. When it first came out, it was kind of a best in show for what co family level cooperative gaming can do. Hitting that sweet spot between a pure family experience with all that dice rolling, but giving just enough gamer mechanisms to satisfy a lot of different gamers. When out of print, but it is being resurrected as many uh, great games do, reprinted in this anniversary edition. In addition, you are going to get a one verse many mode uh, in the anniversary edition. So that is there for you to enjoy. What exactly makes this game special and worthy of reprint? How does the one verse many play out? I'll tell you that and more in this review, then give my final thoughts. Full disclosure, I was sent the review copy of this game by the publisher. My number five, a mix overall is the production quality of the new edition relative to the old one. You're not gonna get blow away production over here like we are familiar with, with some of the higher end products because this is for kids, it's for a mass appeal. It's great for what it is. If you remember the old edition, nothing much has changed. Slight change with the fire. It is now a bigger, more haunting ghost. I like that. My one difficulty comes with the construction of the little ghost. In the base edition, this is what you got. They were pretty stable on the on the uh, bottom end. On uh, this edition, at least the one that I have now, this might change by the time you get it. Uh, there is this construction of the uh, little ghost, which creates a little bit of stability issues. If you are jostling the board, or if it gets moved around, you notice that a, a couple of them are going to be uh, falling over, going into different rooms. You kind of have to reset a little bit. It's not terrible depending on how stable your play area is, uh, but I thought that if they had a chance again, I would have wanted the more stable ghost minions. My number four, which is a mix, is what's new in the 10th anniversary edition, which is a one versus many mode, basically the main thing that is separating the different editions. So my daughter was very excited. She does not like to play cooperative games with daddy. She likes to whip them up. So uh, I was excited too, to have something that she could enjoy because she does like this game. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so the way it works is that if you're playing cooperative, you have a small bot deck and uh, tells you where the bot goes. Pretty simple. As the um, haunter player, the head haunter, you have all these extra cards that you are shuffling in. And sometimes the uh, operation is easy. Put a ghost in a particular room. Sometimes you can choose to move ghost around and make ghost appear where you don't expect it. Uh, some one shots in there that are more powerful. Adds a little bit more of a strategic layer where if you're an adult playing a kid's game, you might be bored by some of your options, but I think the, the game does a good job with the one verse many of giving that adult player a little bit more strategy to make it more interesting for them. On the more difficult side, uh, at least in the experience when I played with my daughter, uh, is the way the card play goes out. So, and this is a roll and move game, so cooperative game, you roll and you move, uh, you're good to go. In the one versus many, the roll happens, and then before the move, the card play happens from the head haunter. So it's like I rolled my five. Oh, wait a minute, before I do that, we're gonna get a ghost over here. Uh, you see the strategic possibilities, and I can see some players really liking that strategic end of things little bit more info. However, breaking up the turn like that, it just went very much against what my daughter is used to in gaming. Roll and move, roll and moves. And so much of these, you know, family friendly games depend on flow and familiarity. So having that friction point of breaking up the roll and the move didn't quite jibe with my daughter, but it might jibe in your family. Now let's get into the core of what makes Ghost Find Treasure Hunters so much fun. So we got a couple of pros lined up, starting with number three, roll and move. Yes, I know as gamers, we like to uh, say whatever we want about roll and move, but in this particular one, it takes a mechanism that gamers are going to tend to already know if they are familiar with sorry and etc. and add that little bit more wrinkle to bring them half a step up, which is perfect because you're going to roll and you have choices as to which rooms you go into, uh, calculating odds on whether these are defeatable or where the gem is, etc. Just really simple and easy to understand 
understand and pass the excitement of what a roll and move can bring. Yes, there are going to be turns where you roll a one and you don't get anywhere, but that's where you encourage, okay, fast turn, keep it moving, keep it moving. So much of Ghost Find Treasure Hunters is about flow, so it's all good. My number two, speaking of uh, simple mechanisms that are introduced in an accessible way, winning and losing uh, really gets gamers started as they go up the ladder to more complicated versions of these mechanisms. Winning, you got pick up and deliver. You got gems all around. You have these nice minis with backpacks. Uh, pick up the gem, bring it outside, uh, stack your gems, and you're good. Also, you have the nice wrinkle of uh, sometimes you want to play on the numbered side. Uh, so all the gems have numbers on the other side. Go get them in order. Very easy to understand. And once again, very fun. Losing is spreading. So as the uh, cards come out and more ghosts populate the area, we will grow in size. And eventually in kind of a pandemic style, uh, they will explode into the bigger ghost. That is easy to know, evocative. It makes losing very easy to understand because it's just, uh, if you have no more ghosts, a bigger ghost to place, then you'll lose. I truly appreciate that I can say in my number four, especially that the cards have a little bit of a strategic bite in them, but it retains that simple, fun core excellently done. My number one by the country mile is the ghost busting, the dice rolling in order to get rid of monsters. My daughter agrees with me. She is not on the video because she's gotten a little bit too old for the daddy's videos uh, with gaming. She'd rather listen to Taylor Swift, so that's okay. But she told me to tell everybody the ghost busting is fun. Way it works is that you enter a room with some ghosts and you roll one die per player present. And if you roll uh, the matching symbol, then you get rid of the ghost. With the bigger ghost, you have to roll a uh, one of these symbols. However, that's a little bit harder. So you are going to want to coordinate with your friends so that you increase your chances of rolling that symbol. I love that choice. It encourages table talk. Come on, get over here. I have to uh, help defeat this monster. No, I have to go over here and deliver my gem. So that table talk is really fun. The dice rolling is just exciting in and of itself. So that's kind of where the magic is in Ghost Find Treasure Hunters. If that is appealing to you, then I would strongly recommend giving this game a try with your family. If you already own the old version of Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters, I don't know if it is worth a move over to the new one, especially if the one verse many is not appealing to you. And especially if you own that super rare, creepy seller's expansion, which I've been looking for, which is super expensive uh, whenever I look for it. Uh, so if you have all that going on, uh, the new one doesn't have too much for you. However, most of the people that are watching this may not be familiar with the old version at all. For me, if you have that family weight atmosphere in your gaming life, if you have a, a young person who is just getting into cooperative games uh, and they like that dice rolling adventure style feeling, then Ghost Find Treasure Hunters is a no brainer pickup. And personal wish over here, if you come out with that expansion or other ones, then I'm totally in. So that is Ghost Find Treasure Hunters. Thank you so much for tuning into the One Stop Co-op Shop. We'll see you at the next stop.